This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders' two convenient Michigan locations, where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 2017 release of the 1970 Dodge Charger RT by Ravel in 125th scale. It borrows parts from the Fast and Furious kit. It's kit number 85-4381 in the current catalog, and it's always available online and in stores at this time. Now, the Skill Level 5 kit has 117 parts, molded in white, chrome, clear, and clear red, with some vinyl tires and metal pins. The body appears to be the same as the F&F charger, but the door scoops are molded separately. And this is a good thing for the RT had those scoops while the other trim levels did not. Now the kit comes with correct 1970 Charger tail light panel and tail lights. Hallelujah! And it features Magnum 500 rims like the uh, 68 and 69 Charger. However, these were the new design and fit in the tires like on the F and F kit. Now the tires in the kit are red lines which really look good. And the only drivetrain option is the 426 Hemi with a 4-speed and Dana rear axle. The interior is well designed and has a pistol grip shifter, but it also has a console, which means maybe we've got another version coming up. Now the pistol grip would be used for the floor shifter in this kit, and the instructions are typical book format. The decals are water slide and include all the body badging and rear stripes in both red, black, and white. Now the dimensions when done, about eight and a quarter inches long, three inches wide, and two and a quarter inches high. Here are the contents of this kit, and while some people might open up the box and pull out each of these pieces and try to find some words to describe them, I'm going to call this my open box review in ten seconds. So take a look, here's all the parts. But their open box review won't help you build the kit, so I'm going to help you do that. We're going to use some Model Master liquid cement some white glue for clear parts, and super glue for strength. But also remember, if you see any products mentioned here in the review, please follow the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines for your own protection. Here are the decals for this kit. They are very colorful and the register is good. I suggest that uh, just about any color combination would work here, uh, but you can use your uh, mix and match capabilities to find the right combination for you. If you really want to do a good job with these. They're large, so I would suggest you use a lot of warm water and some aftermarket uh, setting solution for the decals to make sure that they con uh, conform to the contours and stick well to the body. As you can see, the parts for the engine here are very well detailed, and we're going to start with that for assembly, so put together the block, oil pan, heads, front, and intake, and then paint the motor hemi orange with aluminum transmission. The valve covers, uh, the coil, starter, and the fan are black, and the belts are rubber color with black and aluminum pulleys. Now, the exhaust manifolds are steel colored, and I'm not going to use the distributor that's circled here, uh, but you can paint it tan with a steel lower section uh, for um, use if you like. Now, assemble the rest of the motor, and the lower half of the air cleaner is black. As I mentioned, I didn't use the kit's uh, distributor. I I bought an aftermarket distributor from Morgan and um, then I drilled the shaft out where it goes in and glued in the uh, distributor there and then drilled out the locations on the valve covers uh, for the spark plugs and a small part of the black wire is used for the boots. You just slide it down onto the wire and match the wires up to a wiring diagram available on the internet to wire your engine. Glue those into place and you've got a really nice looking motor. Now gather up the parts for the interior, and note the, um, the the shifter that's supplied here wouldn't work correctly with the console. It's merely a floor plate shifter, um, so I decided not to use the sh the uh, console for this kit. Now uh, assemble the seats, uh, then add the back seat, attach the pedals and the heater cord to the firewall, and paint the floor and the firewall flat black. The seats and the door panels are semi-gloss black and then highlight the door panels with a silver pen for the highlight there the trim and the shifter is brown with a and black to add even more detail I decided to carpet my model 
So I use what's called flocking, and that's uh, remnants from carpets, and they are chopped real fine. You can find them online at uh, hobby stores and retailers, or sometimes in craft shops. But you just make sure that the base is about the same color, and then you uh, paint some white glue onto the area, tamp some of the uh, filtered uh, flocking onto it, uh, tamp it down a little bit, turn it over and knock off the excess, and you've got a carpeted floor. Install the uh, interior seats, the shifter, the door panels, and the firewall into place in the interior bucket. Now we can paint the dashboard semi-gloss black, and the column is the same color with a brown and silver steering wheel and a silver blinker stock on the column. Now there's a decal on the dash for the uh, instruments, and install the dash then and the column with the wheel into the interior tub and the slots provided on the sidewalls. Get these pieces out of the kit to start preparing the body for painting. Assemble the parts of the car that can be painted as a whole unit. And the RT scoops can also be uh, installed first. Then add the hood hinges to the hood and the rear panel can be in, uh, put into place. Now wet sand the whole body to remove any blemishes or flash or parting lines and prepare it for primer. I was looking for a um, dark and rich color, so I primed the entire thing inside and out with some uh, black primer. Once that's dry, wet sand the primer to smooth it out and prepare it for color coat. I was wanting to get um, close to the plum crazy purple, but with a little more richness and uh, depth. So I painted the car uh, with uh, Createx Colors Illustration Color. It's called Opaque Purple number 5076. It's a water-based airbrush color. And I used some automotive reducers and clear coat to finish it off. Once the body was dry, I used plenty of warm water to place the decals into position and some setting solution uh, to make sure that they conform to the contours. It may actually take more than one or two applications of the setting solution to get them to fully fit into their uh, features. So go ahead and let those dry. And once that's done overnight, give your body the clear coat to seal in the decals and the color coat. Back in the 70s, almost all the trim on cars was nickel-plated uh, aluminum. And what we call chrome trim. So I used some foil to emulate the chrome trim. It's just like tape. Uh, it's a metal foil with a self-adhesive backing. You just cut off a strip about the size of the feature you want to cover. You press it into place and then trim off the excess with a real sharp hobby blade. And there you have it, chrome trim. Prior to assembling the glass, uh, I use um, what's called the Pledge Floor Care product. It's a liquid uh, floor wax. And you just dip the glass into those uh, a vat of the floor wax and then let it uh, wick off and completely uh, dry. And that really makes the uh, windows look thinner and clearer. And after that's dry, you can go ahead and install the uh, rear view mirror to the windshield and get that ready for installation. Paint the visors black, uh, semi-gloss black like the interior, and install the dome light. And then go ahead and install the windows using some white glue around uh, the edges to uh, put a bead there uh, to put those into place, and then the white glue will dry clear. Start on the chassis next, and note that the uh, to install the steering box, set the interior into place, and then glue the steering box in with the shaft uh, mocked up in place in its firewall location so that you get the correct location uh, for the steering box. And then once dried, the chassis can be painted and remove the copyrights on the underside. Uh, you can see the red circles here. Uh, for a contest model or, or just for more authenticity. And then the chassis is painted flat black with uh, semi-gloss black frame rails and a steel fuel tank. The brake lines are highlighted with a silver pen. Gather up these pieces from the kit and paint the brake booster black uh, with a silver and copper master cylinder and then the wiper motor is silver color. Install those onto the firewall. Now the radiator and the shroud is flat black and assembled to the core support. Now the lower hose is rubber color and the horns are black and added to the core support. Locate some gluing points to install the interior uh, into the body 
Uh, scrape off any paint that's there to make sure you get a good bond and then go ahead and install that uh, into position. Turn the body over and uh, put the interior into place. Now grab the motor assembly and uh, scrape the glue off the motor mounts there and the locating points on the chassis and go ahead and glue that into place uh, using some uh, good slow setting glue to make sure it's in position on the uh, third member crossover and on the motor mounts. As I mentioned, finally, Ravel has gotten the tail lights and the rear tail panel of the 70 Charger correct. So go ahead and install those tail lights into the rear of the body. Starting at the rear uh, of the body, slide the chassis into the body and shoehorn the chassis into the body and install the core support uh, in the body as well. We'll move to the uh, suspension and exhaust and the front suspension uh, is assembled and painted semi-gloss black. The rear suspension is uh, painted semi-gloss black as well. The drive shaft and the exhaust are steel colored and the mufflers are aluminum. Now the frame blocks are semi-gloss black and they're installed onto the chassis. And the front and rear shocks are red or whatever your favorite color is and install the front suspension and shocks. Now add the drive shaft to the transmission and install the exhaust with the exhaust tips. Um, now add the rear suspension into place for the lower section. These parts out to assemble the wheels and tires and don't they look great with those red lines? It reminds me of the days back in the late 60s and early 70s. Now press and roll the tread of the tires on a sheet of sandpaper and a flat surface to rough up the uh, tire tread and give it a used look. Um, and use a 50-50 black wash that's um, thinner and paint uh, to highlight the rims. Now insert the pins into the front tire the small rim backs and attach those to the rim and do the same for the rear those are the large rim backs and paint them black. Now the brakes are silver with gold calipers. Now you'll need to use a little caution here sometimes this is delicate um, uh, but use um, I would say like a flat head screwdriver of a standard on the back side here and press the tires into position both um, on the front suspension there on the spindles and then uh, also of course on the rear suspension uh, just to give it a little support uh, because it takes a good press uh, a good firm pressing to get those into place once they snapped in they'll sh they should stay for good With your rolling chassis in hand turn the body over spread the sides out a little bit and just drop the chassis into place you now have uh, a basically a rolling chassis and uh, body combination uh, to finish the vehicle off. I wanted to personalize my car so I went ahead and took my logo and um, printed it out on a plain white paper on a color inkjet printer uh, and uh, after sizing it up for a license plate size um, image and then uh, I just cut it out put a piece of uh, cellophane tape on each side of it and I'll use that later to glue into position for a custom uh, plate. We'll add these uh, pieces to the car now so get those out of the kit. So install the gas cap, the door handles, wipers, and then paint the overflow bottle white with a black cap. The battery is black and the hoses are rubber color. Now install the underhood parts there and the black wash the grill uh, and then install it with that 50-50 uh, thinned paint and thinner combination of, of black wash. Now the lights on the valence are clear orange and installed with the valence installed. Now we can use these parts to install the rear bumper, the license tag to the bracket, and the backup light lenses to the bumper. Well, there you have it. This great looking new RT kit has been uh, requested by modelers for quite some time since about 1970 actually. It just seemed like the companies couldn't get it quite right. But this one kind of fits the bill. The only thing is the um, automatic console which I just deleted and uh, used uh, the uh, floor shifter that goes along with a standard floor shift plate. Now with my fully um, uh, authentic RT kit in place uh, I can be proud of this one. It went together like a dream. There was uh, very little flash um, the injector marks are in the in a pro, in, are in appropriate places so they don't show and this was a nice kit just like the F and F kit was last year uh, but um, the the molded in badging on the grill 
was there, but um, uh, you know you could shave that off. Uh, but it takes uh, quite a bit to rework that, so I left it and just kind of blacked it out with uh, some of the 50/50 wash. Um, so if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.